So let's talk about what you can expect if you want to join a green coffee intermediate course. When we study green coffee, we don't just isolate it to the beans alone, but we integrate coffee growing and the green coffee processing. We also have to integrate things that impact the roaster. So if you've ever seen Kenya AA, AB, PB, Columbia Supremo, Excelsa, what do those variations mean? Screen size 20, 18, 16, 14, these are elements that are really important to the coffee roaster, but they're coming from the processor, from the grower producer to the roaster, and then ultimately they're going to impact the cup. So we also look at sensory attributes. We do cupping with roasting defects, roasting defects. We do cupping with coffee defects, green coffee defects. So you get to understand some of the aged papery notes, some of the uh, insect damage and mold or some of the different fungal attributes that can come into green coffee. It's really important as a sensory, as a green coffee expert, as a coffee roaster, that you begin to understand some of these things. One of my, one of my soap boxes for coffee roasters is that just not enough people understand screen sizes and how much you can dramatically improve the quality of your roasting if you lock in your screen sizes, your coffee sizes. So, for example, the SCA recommends, or rather they've set a standard for coffee grading. And this is where coffee grading and coffee sizing, it gets a little convoluted. Because when we talk about grades, we wanna talk about quality measures, but an aspect of quality that has been blended in is the size of the bean. Now, I would, I would agree that, you know, decades ago, you could tell a lot by if the bean was big or small, whether it would be better or not so good. But with all the advances in technology that we have and coffee processing, I've had, I've had many small bean coffees that I prefer over their larger companions. Kenya AB versus an AA, for example. I'll take AB anytime if I just have to choose blindly. So what we do is we start with 350 grams, we do a 350 gram sample, and this same 350 grams would be used on a black tray. We have grading mats that we will be using for the course so that you can understand what is a category one versus a category two defect. What is a full black versus a partial black? Severe insect damage versus partial insect damage. What is a sour, a floater? What is a Quaker or underdeveloped? all of these aspects that come into play when we're roasting. But for this example, we'll take this 350 grams of coffee and we have to determine what size is this coffee bean and can we accurately say that it is that size. So two different measures here. So if you can see in the camera, the screens are ranked in order of large to small. So we have 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, and so on. All the way down to a screen that will catch anything that falls through. So down here we have a few different pieces of uh, broken bits. Broken bits, dirt, and foreign matter that was in the coffee. Now, in each of these screens, we'll be able to see what kind of a percentage existed in all of the screens. So this would be 20 and above. Anything that is 20 64ths of an inch or a screen size 20 would be represented in the 20 screen. Not very many. You could say that's what we're going to do at the end. We can measure each of these screens and say, how many grams is in there? If there's 3.5 grams of coffee on this 20 inch screen, then 1% of that 350 gram sample will be represented as a 20. We do the same thing measuring the 19. So these are coffees that are 19 and up, anything that didn't fall through. There's a few more than the 20. And we can make sure that all of this is shaken well. So now we're down to the 18. There are a few more on the 18. Not a lot, but maybe we're getting around the 5% range. 
I can see one of these looks a little sour or old. One of them has insect damage. All right, we're getting a lot more on the 17. They're still not really falling through. So uh, 17, we're probably five, 10%. A lot of these are on the 16. So I just wanna make sure that we're really a 16 here. We've got a lot of them on the 16. That's more like a 20%. We've got a lot of them on the 15. And quite a few on the 14. And these are actually quite round and ovular in shape. So they kind of look like an Ethiopian or a pea berry. And uh, you start to get that. Some of these differences as we go down, you get really small or broken beans. Where are we at? We're at the 13. So very few beans on the 13, also on the 12. So what do I notice about this coffee? The first thing I notice is that the majority of the coffees are between 14, 15, 16, yeah, not really 17. Maybe 17 and 14 are similar. So this is really like a 15, 16 coffee, but we also have them on 17 and 18 and 19 and 20. So what that tells me about this coffee is that it wasn't sorted very well. I've got a bag of coffee here that came to me. I don't know where it came from, honestly. This was down in the cupboard and I pulled it out. But when you have a bag of coffee like this and you just throw it into the roaster, what's going to happen? These larger beans, 19 and 20, 18, there's a lot of surface area and they're gonna absorb that heat. They're going to roast faster. They're gonna take it in and they're going to develop fully or they're going to burn. They're going to crack at first crack first. So those are the big beans that are blended in with a lot of medium beans, 14 through 17. Now, if you gave me a screen size and you said, hey, this is a nice crop of coffee, I've sorted it and it's 18 plus, I'd say, great. I know how to roast that. But now I have this whole majority coffee that is 14 to 17. It's kind of a medium sized coffee. This coffee, especially down at the 14, 15 level, will take longer to absorb heat because there's less surface area. Those smaller beans are more prone, perhaps. They could be prone to crash. They're also just harder to hit with the heat that's flowing through the roaster. So these beans may start to be a little underdeveloped and uh, they will start cracking after those ones start cracking. So there's an inconsistency in the roast. And that's the key that I was saying, the soap box that I have for roasters. Here we just have small broken bits. Those are going to burn in the roaster, create a char and a carbon and a bitterness. So where roasters can make a huge leap in their roasting is to say, I am strictly going to buy coffees that fit within four or more preferably two or three screens. Okay, so if I had to choose, I would choose Let's sort this coffee out and give me the 1516. I'm gonna go with a 1516 on this coffee. Don't give me the big stuff. Don't give me the small stuff because I don't wanna over roast it. I don't wanna burn it. I just want a consistent roast. And that's going to clean up the coffee, create clarity. When you want clarity in your cup and clarity in your flavor notes, acidity, attributes, you don't want a lingering bitterness or a lingering astringency get your sizes nailed down. You can do this if you have screens for yourself and uh, obviously these are small for lab use for coffee grading. You can do this on a small scale if you're a small home roaster and see great improvements in your roasting, in your cupping. And at the larger scale, there is equipment for sorting. You know, these are just, I'll show you with the smallest one here since it's not full. These are just metal screens with holes in them. Smaller holes for the smaller screen size, larger holes for the larger screen size. That's coffee sizing. And then of course, we're going to talk about the defects that are present for coffee grading. One of the really important things that we do in the green coffee intermediate class, and it's amazing how the green coffee intermediate, sensory intermediate for SCA match so closely. They correlate so well with 
the Q Grader course. So if you've been thinking about taking a Q Grader course, this is a great, faster, cheaper way to get yourself going and confident for one day when you do take a Q. Hope this was fun. I would love to see you in the course. Check out our green coffee barista and roasting that are coming up the middle of December. Give yourself an early Christmas present and we'll see you there. Bye.